Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of JDM Masters Car Reviews and we're in Hakone again and it's cold, it's rainy and we have today a Subaru Impressa WRX STI version 6 sedan. Now that's a really long name but um, we're gonna check this car out and it belongs to a very good friend of mine, uh, Jeremy and this is the last of the GC8 first generation Impreza and it's really cold out here and it's raining so I'm gonna take out my STI umbrella right now and uh, do the review so this is a first generation Impreza which is actually based on the first generation Subaru Legacy now the floor pan is the same but what they did was make the car wheelbase a bit shorter it has the same overall width which is a five number in Japan's regulations which means that the body is no longer than 1700 uh, millimeters a lot of cars had a long body and they kept it this width dimensions in order to make it uh, compliant for the regular car series so let's talk a little bit about the basic model which came out in 1992 the base model Impreza now as I explained earlier the name is really long so let's dissect all the little parts of this name <laughs> The predecessor of the Impreza was the Leone, which was also the base model for the Legacy. Now, Subaru is made by Fuji Heavy Industries, which is a very interesting company because they produced airplanes, they were, they're into aerospace, and they were the eternal sort of rival with Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, as evidenced also by uh, their battle uh, in the WRC. The Impreza is a D-segment car compact saloon uh, made to go against rivals like the Toyota Corolla, the Nissan Sunny, the Honda Civic, and the Mazda Familia. And not forgetting, of course, its rival, the Mitsubishi Lancer. The Impreza WRX is a four-wheel drive turbocharged version, which was a high-performance version which appeared in 1992. So a little bit about the history of its origins into the WRC. Subaru wanted to compete with a more compact and agile car after having the legacy going up against the Galant VR4 in the WRC. This was considered a bit too long and too bulky. So when Mitsubishi decided to field the Lancer, at about the same time, the Impreza uh, was fielded into WRC competition, having a shorter wheelbase and more compact, and they just basically carried over the EJ20 horizontally opposed, nicknamed Boxer Engine with a turbocharger, combined with a four-wheel drive mechanism, which was the trend uh, in the in the late 80s in the WRC for Group A. So this car is really compact. I mean, compared to its rival, the Mitsubishi Lancer, it's about 4,300 millimeters long, which by today's standards is a really compact car. Wheelbase is very similar to the Lancer Evolution 5,500, actually, uh, which is one of the shorter wheelbase even in that time compared to the Civic, which was 2.6 meters. Now, the two liter turbo engine was a regulation in the WRC. So for the first version, WRX was used to homologate for Group A. The version we have here today is the final STI version six. The Impreza GC model has a long model life. It actually spans two Lancer Evolutions models. They are the 123 and the 456. But Subaru chose to maintain this body style all the way to the end of the Evolution 6 equivalent era. So getting on the road driving this GC8 version 6. Now, you know, it really doesn't feel too different from the previous versions uh, because the symmetrical four-wheel drive drivetrain uh, has never really changed since maybe version 1. Now, the STI uh, is very different from the Lancer Evolution. It doesn't rely on uh, electronic devices, high-tech gear. It's very analog, especially the non-RA version. It doesn't have a front LSD unlike the RA, but it has a 50-50 torque split uh, center diff and also a mechanical rear differential. I think this one has a sure track. So yeah, I, I think it is like the feeling when you drive it, like uh, it feels like that. Mm. So here we have it, WRX, which could stand for World Rally Experimental. And then in 1994, Subaru Technica International, known as STI, which is the motorsports and tuning arm of Fuji Heavy Industries Subaru, decided to make a special 
version of the WRX, putting a lot of SDI parts for the first version. And later, with the homologation evolution of the WRC, they came up with version 2, 3, 4, and then 5, and then finally 6. And it was that time where it seemed that Mitsubishi and Subaru were really going to head-to-head -head each year, releasing a different version with better upgrades to the engine, the turbocharger, the design, the four-wheel drive. But something about the WRX really remained uh, a little bit different. The Japanese five number body line is smooth and straight and this is something that never really changed from the original WRX to the version 6. The body width never really grew. Unlike the Lancer Evolutions 5 which became 1770 millimeters to fit Group A WRC regulations. For the road car this was the same spec used up to 1995 Colin McRae's 555 famous four-door uh, WRC Group A. After that, it became the WRC car spec, which was actually based on a base model and then it was, had a widened body, which they made a special version called the 22B. It's another car to talk about another time. Something really characteristic about 90s Subaru were these frameless door windows in what the Japanese call a hard top. You can see the front and the rear doors do not have a frame. And this is one of the distinctive characteristics of Subaru cars until the GRB. The GDB also had this feature. The angle of the rear glass kind of like slopes uh, very stubbornly down to this tail and the very distinctive rear tail lights and uh, the side profile and you have on the gentle curve right here and straight lines. Uh, very, very characteristic and kind of quirky as, as, as some people uh, talked about uh, when it came out back in the day. And the GC was Subaru's uh, mass selling car, but the WRX and the STI version models was the performance choice for um, street racers, circuit racers, rallyists, and there were many, many, many different versions of this car. So first, you had the regular models from the 1.6, the 2 liter, the 2 that had a four wheel drive, and then we come to the performance WRX version, and then we have the STI version. Now, earlier on, I talked about how the first version STI was a specially prepared version from the factory, it was a limited edition. From version 2 onwards, it became a mass production car. So, STI was something a little bit like BMW's M or AMG. Um, however, it was developed hand in hand with uh, STI themselves. And so they produced this special version car for as a highest performance version. In comparison, the Mitsubishi Lancer didn't have a lot of different grades. There was the GSR or the RS. So visually, we're gonna talk about how to distinguish a normal WRX and an STI version. Now, provided the car is stock, you can see, first of all, the JDM version has the pink uh, badge here. The pink is signifying the corporate colors of STI. And with the I here means Impreza. On the overseas version, there was like these stars called the Pleiades. A little note about what the stars mean. Subaru actually is a translation to the Pleiades star constellation in Japanese. On the road version of the STI, there were these fog light covers. It doesn't mean it doesn't have fog lights. It just came without the fog lights option, perhaps for making it lighter but Jeremy's car does actually have fault lights hiding behind this which is a really nice feature if he needed it you could just unscrew this and it comes out the version 5 onwards was the facelift version and it had a different design of the canard for the better airflow and the version 6 had something very different from the version 5 is this lower spoiler it's deeper down here otherwise nothing much is actually changed from the version 5 and also on the rear wing, the angle of attack of the rear spoiler is a little bit higher. So these are the two distinctive features of the version 6. Anyone who wants to get into four-wheel drive turbo cars, I would recommend them to start with the Impreza WRX STI because it's very easy to drive. Uh, it kind of understeers at the limit, which makes it safe, but also very, very predictable the way it gets on, you know, the way when you corner, it's on rails. Uh, it's very neutral. How do you feel? I feel, yeah, so you're right, it's a very easy car to, to handle. First of it, despite like the power, like the four-wheel drive system, it's very easy to drive and uh, for a daily drive, it's very convenient. You don't have to think too much, like, uh, like you just drive and it, it feels good. When you start to push a little bit more, you feel the car is very capable and she wants to, like it's very easy to plan to uh, push it in a corner, like uh, right. the, the front wheel base, like uh, the front wheel, like uh, is very easy to place wherever you want in the corner you the, the follow the back follow very well mm -hmm. so you have a good feeling with the car it's a, it's a car would put, uh, give confidence mm -hmm. so you can you can push it like with confidence mm -hmm. that's what I, 
but every Subaru enthusiast, one of the reasons perhaps why they love this car, when you're sitting in the driver's seat, you see this huge hoop scoop. Now, admittingly, on the GDB, it became larger and larger and until the GRB was actually flush with the bonnet. But if you're in a WRX STI GC8 and you see the sort of power bulge, but what is this? It actually feeds air into the intercooler as we're going to check out right now. So that's the inlet of the hoot scoop and part of it actually goes into the left side which feeds air to cool the turbocharger which is sitting sort of behind the engine. Admittingly this is not a really good location for a turbocharger because it gathers a lot of heat but nevertheless uh, the entire cooling system uh, seems to suit the car and it's designed quite well. Now the STI parts that you can see, you have a larger aluminum intercooler over here with the words STI and a very special part from the factory. It's actually a carbon fiber strut bar engineered here, it says by the aerospace division as I described earlier because they make airplanes. So imagine airplane technology in your car. That's just really, really neat. The famous four pot boxer engine, technically called the horizontally opposed flat engine. Now let's talk a little bit about what is actually a boxer engine. A flat engine has the pistons at a 180 degree angle and it moves outwards from each other. This gives the engine block itself a lower center of gravity compared to V6 engines or inline four engines. Now a boxer means the crankshaft is actually arranged in such a way that two opposing pistons move in and out at the same time. Hence, it's like the hands of a boxer punching each other, which gives that nickname the boxer engine. It also gives a particular exhaust note, especially with the unequal length manifolds used until the GDB version C. Uh, that gives it that bo -bo 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 kind of like characteristic trouble, which is uh, very characteristic and th what Subaru fans like, also with Porsche fans. It's quite similar to the sound of uh, the old air-cooled Porsches, but on the GC8, it just sounds fantastic at low revs. If you're not used to what a boxer engine looks like, all you're going to see is lots of wires, uh, and here is the intake manifold, uh, it's the STI version should have all red paint, but unfortunately this is all just shaved off now. It's by the due age and heat and the engine itself sits under here. It's right here actually. It's right here. This is how wide the engine is sitting in the engine bay. So it's sitting a little bit lower, um, taking up most of the, f of the space in front of the front axle, but as Subaru always talks about in their marketing brochure, symmetrical all-wheel drive. This is one of the key points of Subaru cars. You have the engine here, which is in a longitudinal layout. out. You have the gearbox sitting behind it with the two shafts coming out right behind the engine and then the propeller shaft going to the back. So this gives the four-wheel drive layout a very symmetrical kind of even uh, drivetrain design. One characteristic of the gearbox is that it houses the front and center differentials with the front shafts all in one unit. So like, for example, changing oil, you just have to do it in one go. That's quite uh, a very convenient thing. The Boxer engine is a short stroke compared to the Mitsubishi 4G63, which is a long stroke. So this is an over square engine compared to the under square engine, which gives it much more revability. So having that rev range which can go up to almost 7,900 rpm red line combined with a high response turbocharger gives that punchy back in your head rest kind of push when you push it above 4,000 rpm and this is a characteristic uh, that makes the STI distinctively different from the Lancer Evolution. The intercooler sits right here with very short intake tracks going directly into the intake manifold and so the whole path uh, is very short uh, for the turbo flow. When it's on the road driving it, you can really feel that on off throttle response is really punchy. On the bonnet here, we have the hood scoop and we also have these vents, but on the road car underneath, it's actually covered up. You can remove it maybe in the summer for letting heat escape, uh, but not many people actually realize that or do that. And the, the hood or the bonnet is made of aluminum, but the fenders are still made of steel. That just gives it a little bit more lightweight. Uh, for the front. So of course the top version and the fan favorite of the GC8 model is the 22B which is actually a special version based on the version 4 Type R with the wider blister fenders and that's a really really rare car and it's very pricey if you do manage to find one. So 
but honestly the GC8 normal STI versions is just as good and much more readily available. So guys, if you do ever import one of these JDM cars into your, your country and how do you ensure that it's a genuine STI version? It's all in the chassis model codes. List of all the G versions which indicates version 6. You have GC8 G48D. Now this is just the regular WRX sedan and down here is the WRX sedan STI and you can see here instead of having the number 8 it's E and for the normal STI it goes back into 7 so you need to find that that letter. Now the 4 here stands for 4 door as you can see and other versions here uh, the 2 means a 2 door and the 5 means a 5 door wagon. So what you're looking for is GC8 G4ED. Now let's see if this is a genuine STI version. And yes it is, as you can see here, GC8 4ED. This indicates it is a sedan non-RA genuine STI version. So Jeremy, you got a genuine car. Great, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence is something that uh, I think especially is engineered into the ge suspension geometry of the stock suspension. It's like, okay, honestly, between the Lancer Evolution and the Impreza WRX STI, which car I would take for the long drive, it would definitely be the Subaru. Yeah, but I mean, this one I still like the original suspension. It's still comfortable, but in the corner, you don't, you don't have any uh, feeling like a uh, like the boots. No, you feel the car like completely uh, like sticking to the ground. Yes, yes, yes. You know, the steering response uh, isn't so twitchy and as sharp as a Lancer Evolution, so it's pretty easy to manage, like you say, it's, it's, it's highly assisted. Uh, but still, you get a lot of feedback from the road, which is what I'm feeling right now, just yeah, exactly. turning into the corners and you step on the accelerator. It doesn't make any sudden front or rear movements. Of course, if you're turning hard, it does tend to understeer a little bit, which is actually safer for the road user who uh, is just driving on normal roads and like toge like this. It's easy to handle, hard to master, but you can feel your progression like uh, all the way you drive. Right, 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 right. Completely agree. Now let's have a look at the interior. Ooh, Impreza's are really good for someone wanting to get into turbo four-wheel drive cars because they're much more predictable, much more neutral to drive. Nice. This is a standard interior. Not much change from the normal Impreza that was changed in 1996 with the version 4. Much more modern, a uh, little bit more convenient. You have a single cup holder here. You have a tray on the top to put cards or tissue or whatever. And even another one here, but it doesn't have the uh, passenger side SRS airbag. So lots of lots of space for, for daily life. But what's special about the SDI version is this Momo steering wheel. A lot of Japanese cars used Momo uh, Italian maker uh, in the 80s and the 90s and this has an airbag. It's almost three degrees out here so the lens is getting a bit foggy. We're gonna get a little bit of uh, white out here and there so sorry about that guys. The instrument cluster is white and it revs up to 7,900 RPM as you can see here with the STI logo and this is the difference between the normal version and the STI and down here you have the gear shift. Uh, leather with red stitching and the Subaru system is kind of based on an FR so the gear shift um, feels like an FR it's solid and you can hear the clunky you know mechanical synchros going in like that very different from the cable shifter of the of the Lancer Revolution and it's quite funny how they decided to put the side mirror controls right in the center console here are uh, really strange a bit like a European car these are for holding your coins as you go past the toll gates maybe not a feature used often and there's even another one here on the STI RA and Type R versions this is actually the place for the dial for the DCCD electronic differential controller to control the stiffness of the center diff but this being the normal version it doesn't actually have the DCCD. Talking a little bit about how the engine feels so because it's a short stroke two liter engine uh, really wants to rev up high. It's kind of like a Honda, isn't it? But with a turbo. Yeah, so you, you, uh, it's a turbo engine, so you need to reach the boost to feel like all the power coming through. But once you did, it's like uh, it's an explosion. Like uh, you go, you're literally like a, like a glue to your Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you have like, you know, the Star Wars. Like, uh, like, you know, you're going through. <laughs> Warp speed, isn't it? 
back to you. Yeah, Jeremy, so, you know, we grew up playing Gran Turismo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I played all the way from one, man, where they had the original uh, Evo 4 STI. So what about I, you? So am I, like from Gran Turismo 1, and I did all of them, even the last one. So I, I would, I'm a huge fan of Gran Turismo. Yeah, from yeah, the yeah. the very beginning of it. So. Now, would you say that a lot of people uh, outside of Japan were introduced to 90s JDN's cars through Gran Turismo? I'm sure they are. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure definitely no GM cars because and thanks to uh, Gran Turismo like uh, a, I mean, when you when you launched the game the first game you had like so many new cars you didn't even know the, the first game was only into like your Japanese cars that's like right that's 90s, right I remember right? yeah yeah so no yeah European car, just a few of them. so when the game reached Europe we are like wow what is this car hmm. what is it so cool what is it so powerful especially since in Europe we only got the Impreza Turbo, which was the 220 horsepower, like yes. it was the WRX here, right? And so that was the first time people actually knew, wow, there are more special versions in Japan. It's JDM versions. Do you think you can find your car inside here? Let's have a look. Oh. Subaru? Oh, oh. Oh, here it is. Ah, but that's not the right version. This is the uh, this is a 22B. Uh -huh. You have the versions. Oh, oh but it is. It's, it's right, right, here. Here. It's right here. That's it. That's it. That's your car. Version 6 sedan four door and it has the front lip it's not the ra so that's the version 5 and it's a little bit different yeah. here wow isn't how do you feel seeing your car inside like you owning this car now that was you played in the game yeah it's funny because like well, you saw my car it's like uh, the yellow uh, cashmere yellow car and uh, i mean this is the one i i picked up in the game so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, wow i'm driving it for real now it's mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah it's, yeah this is this one it's fantastic it's and Cashmere Yellow was only available on the version 6. The other car that had the Cashmere Yellow was the second generation Legacy. Oh, is that an initial D AE86? Two GTRs, NSX. And a Lancer Evolution 6, Tommy Magnan. And we got initial D and one gun midnight car in the same shot. Now That's this amazing. Amazing. Now this is the company called Fun to Drive, which hires out these uh sports cars that you can take around Hakone are really really cool we'll be checking them out and doing a video with them sometime in the future faster faster so we're going to check out what the difference is in the version 5 and 6 which is different from the previous version 4 which Subaru had something called the Boxer Master 4 and then for the version 5 onwards it had what the Boxer Phase 2. Boxer Phase 2. And so I have the catalogue here of the version 5, which will list all the main differences. Uh, the Boxer Phase 2 had more low-end torque and better response. The STI engine actually was different from the normal WRX by having uh, forged pistons with molybdenum coating, uh, strengthened con rods and a different crankshaft, different cams. And so basically, even though they changed it to an open deck, it was uh, the strongest engine of the, of the GC generation. So, you know, driving the STI engine really feels a bit more punchy and responsive. Yeah, the response is very good. Like, you, like, you press the throttle and it immediately, you, know, you just feel the power like, coming in uh, through like, the wheels and you, you speed up and you have to be careful how much kilometers you're going. <laughs> right, <laughs> you, right, you, right. You're very quickly over the speed. Limit. So, let's have a look here. This is the version 4 with the uh, older style bumper and we're coming to the version 5. And you can see how the bumpers are different. And then to the version 6. The additional spoilers here, so this book actually shows, and here is the one that's uh, the best spec, the version 6 R Type R Coupe, which has the best parts of the RA sedan and into the Coupe body with uh, air corn and with the front spoiler, and it's all one package. However, it is useful to note that the sedan body, because it has the center pillar, the B pillar right in the center, is actually stiffer than the Coupe, even though it's got the same wheelbase. That, that's one of the exciting things about driving the STI compared to the Lancer. The Lancer has got a lot of low end torque, uh, the low rumble sound, it's different. I would, this is something very interesting because both cars, rival cars, uh, they have the same formula, compact sedan, two litre, four cylinder, turbocharged, four wheel drive, but they couldn't be more different, isn't it? Do you think like uh, Lancer Evolution and Subaru Impreza, like all four wheel drive, all sedan, all uh, rally stars, uh, you think it's the same, but it's completely different. It is, it is, it is, it, it is, is, it is. And I think, you know, how a lot of fans will talk on really always compare them, but I think it's a matter of taste. Which kind of style do you like, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this little war is like, for cars and enthusiasts, you have to love both. Yeah. So it's two different uh, feeling, especially when you're driving. It is true. 
Salut à tous, je suis Jérémy, je vis au Japon et depuis quelques mois je suis le propriétaire de cette Subaru Impreza WRX STI version 6. C'était très long. Hello guys, I'm Jeremy, I live in Japan uh, and for a few months now uh, I'm the owner of this um, Subaru Impreza WRX STI version 6. It's really a marvelous car, really like very easy to uh, to drive but like uh, still uh, enough technical when you want to push it or when you enjoy a good drive on the mountain road so that's a very good car that i recommend to to everyone who wants to uh, to have fun with a four-wheel drive uh, since i'm a kid i i love like uh, rally sports and uh, gran turismo and like When I was playing, uh, I, I always loved like the, the shape of the car. Yeah, how it looks and like uh, how it feels inside the game too. Uh, I really enjoy like uh, the feeling of uh, of power you have, uh, like how it's cornering. So from the game to the reality, like I could achieve it. So, uh, yeah, that's that's a great feeling, especially here, like in the in the road of uh, of Japan, like uh, some toge. I think it's very cool. <laughs> All right, guys, so that concludes our review of the Subaru Impreza STI version 6 sedan in cashmere yellow. Really, really great color. And let us know in the comments below if you'd like us to review some of the cars, maybe do a comparison, old new STI versus Lancer and different situations. And what are the classic JDM cars you guys are interested in? And it's been a great ride. Thank you for joining us. And until the next episode, peace out.